My message here today is that we are at a turning point for Louisiana's coast. Uh, we, we have decades of studies, decades of scientific information that has helped get us to this point in time, and we now have the funding, uh, the political will, um, to actually construct the projects that have been envisioned for years that actually restore our coast from the various factors of coastal land loss and protect the overwhelming majority of our citizens uh, from hurricanes. Six years ago, I spoke to this very group and I delivered a very simple message. The state of Louisiana needed to prioritize hurricane protection and coastal restoration. Today, I stand before you as the leader of the state's coastal program with a much different message. As a result of this state prioritizing this issue, we now have the necessary resources, the funding, and the political will, and the strong scientific foundation that will allow this state to actually build the large-scale hurricane protection and coastal restoration projects that have literally been envisioned for years and to pursue new policy initiatives to help sustain South Louisiana for generations to come. So my message today is simple. We are at a turning point for Louisiana's coast. No statistic speaks stronger to that fact than the fact that Governor Edwards during his second inaugural address said that over the next four years we will break ground on projects that will ultimately build more land in the state of Louisiana than we expect to lose. That is the first time that we have ever been able to say that since the 1930s. And it is the result of the hard work of the hundred, over 180 men and women who work at the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority. As state agencies go, we are a young agency. We were formed after Hurricane Katrina and Rita, the storms of 2005. We are the single state entity with the authority to articulate a clear statement of priorities for the sustainability, protection, and restoration of South Louisiana. We have one single mandate to develop, implement, and oversee a coastal master plan, a 50-year, $50, $50 billion plan that identifies all of the projects that are needed to achieve a sustainable coast for South Louisiana. We start every presentation we do with this slide. It is our reminder as to what has happened to our coast, and it reminds us of what we stand to lose if we do not implement a single coastal restoration or hurricane protection project. It also serves as our motivation to continue the fight to restore and protect our coast. Over the last several years, the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority has secured over $21 billion for restoration and protection projects in all 20 coastal par parishes. We have completed 13 barrier island projects, 28 shoreline protection projects, 25 marsh creation projects, and 22 hurricane protection projects with 12 hydrologic restoration projects as well. These investments have resulted over 330 miles of improved levees and flood balls. 330 miles, approximately the distance between Houston, Texas to New Orleans, Louisiana. Just think about that for a second. 300 miles of levees that are protecting people, businesses, and livelihoods. We're also in the process of constructing massive floodgates. These floodgates and protection measures are not just protecting hundreds of people. They're protecting tens of thousands of people that live across South Louisiana. This is a depiction to show you the scope and scale of the Bayou Shane floodgate that is currently under construction. Many of you are very familiar with during high water um, times throughout the year, we've had to sink the barge on Bayou Shane to prevent the backwater flooding in St. Mary, St. Martin, Iberville, Assumption, Terrebonne, and Lafouche parishes. This floodgate will be finished construction sometime in late September, early October this year. So next year, 
when the river, Mississippi River and the Atchafalaya River's uh, water levels are elevated, we can close this structure with a push of a button that again protects six parish uh, within that, six parishes within that particular region. We're also, you'll be seeing some groundbreaking and some ribbon cuttings over the next several months with, with Governor Edwards. These investments are not only protecting tens of thousands of people, these investments are also paying off. In 2005, when Hurricane Rita was coming on shore, Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes experienced eight to nine feet of storm surge. 12,000 homes flooded. In 2019, Hurricane Barry was coming on shore. Terrebonne and Lafouche parishes experienced eight to nine feet of storm surge. 11 homes flooded. That is proof that these investments are paying off. Over the last several years, we've also invested hundreds of millions of dollars in restoring our first line of defense in coastal Louisiana, our barrier islands. This is a picture you can see East Trinity on the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, it had deteriorated to a very small barrier island. As a result of the BP oil spill funding, you can see the picture on the right. Uh, this project will currently be con completed this year, probably in the next few weeks. It is part of the Terrebonne Basin Barrier Island and Beach Nourishment Project, which has two other increments, Timberlear Island and West Bell Headland. When all is said and done, over 1,100 acres of beach, dune, uh, and coastal habitat will be created in these three projects. You can see these investments in the barrier islands of Shell Island, P Pelican Island, and Schofield back in 2006. As a result of our investment, this is, this, is, this is what these islands look like today in 2020. We're also constructing projects that are creating a great deal of coastal habitat for our migratory birds, specifically the state's bird, the brown pelican. Queen Bess Island is one of the largest pelican rookeries in the state of Louisiana. You can see back in 2018, that thing, the island itself had deteriorated to about five acres. After the restoration completed in 2020, we now have over 18 acres, or thir excuse me, 30 acres uh, of marsh uh, and a migratory bird habitat that is just adjacent to Grand Isle. I think this project also symbolizes just how far the state has come since the BP oil spill. As I mentioned, this is one of the largest uh, pelican rookeries in the state of Louisiana. Right after nesting season, we had the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries who went out to this island. They were able to discover several brown pelicans that had purple bands on their legs. Those purple bands mean that they were heavily oiled during the BP oil spill. They were brought back into the lab, uh, re-nourished back to health, and then released back into the wild. Uh, and to have those brown pelicans back on this migratory bird habitat, I think symbolizes just how far the state of Louisiana has come since the BP oil spill. You can see the bottom uh, picture there, thousands of brown pelicans are now nesting on Queen Bess Island. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what rebuilding coastal Louisiana looks like. Since 2017, 157 million cubic yards of fill has been utilized to create close to 50,000 acres of land. This is dredging activity on East Trinity Island. Activity like this is happening all over South Louisiana this year. 157 million cubic yards of material is enough to fill the Superdome 34 times. So 34 times of utilizing the material that's been dredged since probably 2007. And this year alone, we have three projects that will utilize enough material to fill the Superdome 18 times. Just to go to show you the progress and the amount of pro projects uh, and the scope and scale of those projects that we have implemented, uh, will be implementing this year across South Louisiana. It's important to know, ladies and gentlemen, that these investments are not just in southeast Louisiana. These are from Cameron, Calcasieu, Vermillion, through South Central, and Vermillion, Iberia, all the way into southeast Louisiana, Baratier, excuse me, uh, Plaquemines, and St. Bernard parishes. So let's talk about coastal resilience. 
It's not just about protection. It's not just about restoration. It's about having a coast that is resilient. As you've just seen, the Coastal Protection and Restoration Authority has made huge strides in addressing land loss up to this point in time. But we are coming into a major turning point for the state's coastal program. When the master plan was first envisioned, it faced head on the fact that coastal, the coastal land loss problem was too large for just random acts of restoration, meaning a couple hundred acres here, a couple hundred acres there. We knew that projects that matched the scale of the problem would be required if we wanted to change the trajectory of a coast that was literally sinking into the Gulf of Mexico. So today, not only do we have, finally have the resources at our disposal to enact these extremely large projects, we also have the additional information about the challenges that await us in future decades that we must tackle today. And so our overall resilience and the overall sustainability of coastal Louisiana begins and ends with sediment diversions. As I mentioned earlier, nearly all of the benefits that we have seen across South Louisiana today are the results of dredging. Dredging the Mississippi River, dredging the Atchafalaya River, dredging areas offshore, offshore and pumping that sediment to create tens of thousands of acres of new land. Sediment diversions have been studied, scrutinized, analyzed, and criticized for years. There's decades, there's decades of science that point to sediment diversions. What do I mean by sediment diversions? I mean the solution to our land loss crisis is reconnecting the river. Sediment diversions harness the power of the Mississippi River for the long-term sustainability of sediment, water, and nutrient delivery to the surrounding wetlands. Sediment diversions are the best solution to utilize our best weapon in fighting and winning this war on our coast. And so there are two sediment diversions that were identified in the 2012 master plan that we are currently moving forward towards implementation. The mid barataria sediment diversion on the west bank of Plaquemines Parish and the mid Breton sediment diversion on the east bank of, of Plaquemines Parish. So why sediment diversions? Sediment diversions reconnect the river and it reestablishes the natural land building process that literally built the land we stand on today. They are our only sustainable way to build new land. It also sustains the land that's in place today and they will sustain the land that we're building through some of our dredging projects. And finally, it restores the estuary and the ecosystem's productivity and historical salinity patterns. From a land building standpoint, the mid barataria sediment diversion can build over 13,000 acres of land in 50 years. This land building scenario takes into account the most extreme levels of sea level rise that is projected over a 50 year time frame, which is about one and a half meters or about 2.7 feet. If we do not see those extreme levels of sea level rise pan out over the next 50 years, those, that land building capability will almost double, to almost 26,000 acres of land. As I mentioned earlier, this is about mimicking the natural process that created the state of Louisiana to begin with. You can see a depiction here the west bank of Plaquemines Parish is located in an area which will capture the maximum amount of sediment that's included in that river. Uh, it's about a two mile intake channel there within deposits that fresh water and that sediment into the Barataria Basin which has some of the highest rates of land loss anywhere in coastal Louisiana. As I also mentioned earlier, this is a, um, we're relying on decades of science. Every single federal study federal study and state study that has looked at coastal restorations and identified the solutions that we need to implement have called for reconnecting the Mississippi River to our coastal marshes. Even going back to the 1927, 1920s, after the flood of 1927, recognized that by levying the Mississippi River, 
uh, that it was going to cut off that sediment supply. In order for us to keep up with land loss, we must, we must reconnect the Mississippi River to the Barataria Basin. And so we know that, excuse me, I missed, I missed a slide, nope. So maybe, maybe you don't trust us. Maybe you don't trust computer models. Maybe you don't trust the studies that have been done over the last several decades. This is a picture that was taken in Vidalia, Louisiana, of a roadway that was flooded by the Mississippi River for several months that literally had to be cleared off. And now you have four to five feet of sand dunes on each side of that road. This is a picture of the Bonnie Carey Spillway. We saw repeated openings of the Bonnie Carey Spillway in 2019. There's a tremendous amount of sediment in that spillway now due to those openings. And the federal government, through the United States Army Corps of Engineers, is now taking material that was deposited in that spillway to construct the $760 million West Shore Lake Pontchartrain levee system around St. Charles, St. John, and St. James parishes. To give you kind of the idea, this is about two to three feet of sediment and sand that is deposited in that spillway. There is more than enough sediment in that river for it to do exactly what we need it to do. And so we know that our estuary is going to continue to change. If we do nothing, our estuary and our ecosystems are going to continue to collapse. So yes, we want to implement change into our ecosystems and our estuaries across South Louisiana. The current marsh in the Barataria Basin without the project is about 335,000 acres today. After 50 years without the project, the projected reduce of wetlands in the area is about 52,000 acres, up to 85% less marsh than what we see today. And so right now, as it relates to the Mid-Barataria Sediment Diversion, we are the, in the middle of a quite lengthy regulatory process. Uh, we just released the draft environmental impact statement, which identifies all of the positive benefits, all of the negative impacts, and then the mitigation strategies to address those negative impacts. There is $300 million, $300 million set aside to address the negative impacts associated with this project. This project in total is approximately $2 billion to construct. It is being funded by the BP oil spill dollars. By the way, in which the federal government through the Department of Justice mandated, mandated that this portion of dollars be spent on restoring barrier islands and sediment diversions. So we are following the law and we are following the consent decree associated with the BP oil spill. So we just went through a robust pu public um, comment process, which ended in early June. Uh, we are currently analyzing all of those public comments. Over 40,000 comments were submitted for consideration. So we're working through those public comments with the United States Army Corps of Engineers. They are the lead regulatory agency on this pro uh, project. And we will be out, back out in the Barataria Basin areas in Plaquemines Parish to finalize the mitigation um, plans associated with this project before the final EIS is published. So those that are impacted by this project have a full understanding of the mitigation measures that the state will be deploying. So everything that I just talked about is the state of Louisiana reacting to things. We've been operating in a reactionary state of mind here in the state of Louisiana for far too long. Reacting to subsidence, reacting to sea level rise, reacting to how vulnerable we are to hurricanes. So in our conversations with the governor upon his reelection, we advise that it is now time for this state to address the causes of many of these issues, to address the causes of climate change. So as a result uh, of the governor signing an executive order, we now have a climate change initiatives task force in the state of Louisiana. This effort includes 146 experts and stakeholders on the task force and its 10 subcommittees. We've held 37 public meetings 
and have collected over 170 actions from the public telling us what they would like to see in a Louisiana climate plan. The goal in front of this task force is to reach net carbon or have carbon neutrality, uh, net zero by 2050. Imagine that, an energy producing state trying to receive net zero of carbon emissions by 2050. And we're doing all of this by working with industry, not against it. Industry representatives, oil and gas, energy companies all have a seat on this task force. And so our approach on this climate work has been much the same as it has been in the coastal program up to this point in time. Number one, it's science driven. It's gonna be bottom up rather than top down. We're welcoming all stakeholders to the discussion. It's gonna be balanced solutions that are actually, actually implementable, play to our strength and needs, and to do it all in a way that is transparent and open to the public. Related to the Climate Initiatives Task Force, the governor also petitioned the Bureau of Ocean and Energy Management to begin the process of looking into the feasibility of have wind energy generated off of our coast. Last month, the process got kicked off with the first intergovernmental meeting with BOEM and was hosted five additional days of stakeholder meetings, which we refer to as Wind Week. So this is proof that we can do things that are good for the environment and good for the economy here in South Louisiana. Our third major effort is focused on policy initiatives is to build out from the work that CPRA and the Coastal Master Plan is doing to include new agencies and new tools in our approach to a more resilient coast. Without losing sight of our responsibility to protect and restore the coast, we need agencies with other specialties tending to the needs of a rapidly changing and vital part of our state. So working with the Department of Economic Development, working with the Workforce Commission and others contemplating economic needs for our future. We need the Children and Family Services and the Department of Health ensuring a vibrant, healthy coast for all residents. And we need to make sure that others are making strides to further strengthen the built environment and sustain the ecosystem. CPRA is also becoming an economic engine of its own. 630 million to 840 million dollars of expenditures every year results in about 460 to 620 million dollars in wages every year. 1.1 to 1.5 billion dollars in annual output. Close to 10,000 jobs each year with average wages of about 60,000 dollars per year. And so my message to you today, again, is that we are at a turning point for Louisiana's coast. We can't have the coast that we had 30 to 40 years ago. We've been very transparent with the public about that fact. But we can have the coast that we need to have. A coast that can sustain over 800 square miles of land a coast that can protect the overwhelming majority of our citizens, a coast that is able to preserve our cultural heritage and allows our economy and the working coast to thrive into the future. So sometimes we get asked by members of the public and sometimes even members of the media, is this even worth it? Why, why are we doing this? And simply put, it's because this place matters. This place is our home. And this issue, the issue of saving the state we love is an issue for the ages. And so I thank you for allowing me to be here with you today and I will be happy to take any questions that you may have.
So we've secured over $20 billion for hurricane protection and coastal restoration projects. Uh, we've utilized about 158 million cubic yards of material, which has created close to 50,000 acres of new land. We've built or improved over 300 miles of new levees uh, and about 60 miles of, of barrier islands. Um, so look, there has been a tremendous amount of progress in recent, recent years uh, for the overall restoration and protection of Louisiana's coast. But if you look at the projects that we're going to be breaking ground on over the next four years. We will actually build more land in South Louisiana than we expect to lose. And that's, that's the first time that we can say that since the 1930s. So it's an exciting time for the coastal program. We've got tremendous amount of funding that's coming to the coastal program that must be spent on these types of projects. Uh, and so our sense of urgency has got to be at a level um, that, that keeps up with the pace of land loss so that we can save our coast and protect our communities. You mentioned Mississippi River di um, sediment diversion. Tell us uh, how critical is that to the overall effort to rebuild the coast? So the Mississippi River literally built the land we stand on today. Uh, and back in 2012, when we were going through the master plan update in 2012, we identified two key projects that reconnect the Mississippi River to our coastal marshes. When the Mississippi River was levied, that's when our land started disappearing in South Louisiana. So reconnecting the river in a controlled way uh, to mimic the natural process that created the land to begin with um, is going to create tens of thousands of acres of new land, but it's also going to help sustain the land that's in place today and also sustain the land that we're building through some of our dredging projects where we're dredging sediment out of the Mississippi River or the Atchafalaya offshore and pumping that sediment to create critical coastal habitat for wildlife and fisheries. It, 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 it's very important to know that when we talk about coastal restoration here in the state of Louisiana, coastal restoration and hurricane protection are one in the same. Uh, for every two miles of wetlands that exist, storm surge can be knocked down by one, feet, one foot. Um, so all of these restoration projects are working hand in hand with some of the large scale hurricane protection projects. Our floodgates, our surge barriers, our pump stations, our massive levee systems that were built around Greater New Orleans, the levee systems that we're working on in Terrebonne and Lafourche Bears. So there's synergies among all of these projects that we're building uh, throughout South Louisiana. You mentioned the 50 year plan. Tell us what is the goal of the 50 year plan and how is climate uh, uh, carbon neutral part of that plan? So the, the master plan is a, it's a 50 year $50 billion plan in its most simplistic form. It identifies a list of projects that need to be implemented to restore and protect our coast. It relies on the best available science, but it also looks at the environmental scenarios that we as a state could, um, could see coming to fruition in the next several years. Uh, so it looks into the rates of sea level rise, the rates of subsidence, um, all of the things that are driving those our, our coast and our environment to disappear. Um, and so the governor, by way of an executive order, actually created a climate initiatives task force that gets us to net carbon neutral by 2050. A lot of the, the issues that we see across coastal Louisiana are being driven by climate change. Climate change can be a political football here in the state of Louisiana. Uh, you can argue whether it's a, it's a natural cycle of the earth or due to man-made uh, activities. But the, the fact is that the Gulf of Mexico is rising. The Gulf of Mexico is higher today than it ever has been. Uh, and so we can't just react to the effects of a disappearing coast. We have to address the causes of a disappearing coast. And that's addressing climate change in a proactive way. Um, and I, I think the governor is, is doing that uh, through the Climate Change Initiatives Task Force that he signed or he stood up through uh, by executive order. How can people get more information? Well, you can certainly go to our, our website at coastal.la.gov. Uh, it outlines all of the projects that are involved in the outlined in the Coastal Master Plan. Or we have a board meeting that's the third Wednesday of every month. Uh, and those meetings are posted uh, on our website. And so you can learn more about all the work we're doing at CPR to restore and protect coastal Louisiana.